Chapter 2 is about the logic. So actually now we are we have got some basic about this course. We have got some idea how the things will work. And we will use all those information from the chapter 1 to build up our knowledge that how to think logically. That is the basic theme of this course. That how to think logically. Um, about this logic stuff, this thing, the first person was as a very famous person, Aristotle, Aristotle, and he started thinking about about the about the logic in in um, in thinking that how to think logically. In then then later in the seventeenth century, the German philosopher and mathematician Leibniz is a very good mathematician. If you if you know about the derivatives and the differentials, Leibniz did a wonderful job there. So he he wanted to use some symbols, some notations to build up the compound statements. Like if I want to connect two parts, two statements of, of a situation, then how to connect them. So he actually worked on the symbols. Connect, for example, you know that when you want to combine two sets, what do you do? You plug in a union symbol, a symbol of union in between the two sets and it gives us an understanding that, okay, we can combine the two sets by using the symbol of the union. So these kind of symbols for combining two different situations in mathematics were thought by these philosophers. And later, all these logical statements which we are going to discuss in this chapter, they were the foundation of digital logic circuit design. You will study in your major computer science and database theory and automata theory, computability and the most famous these days artificial intelligence. So these are the things which purely base on logic. So the first thing is what is logic? In simple words logic is actually a meaningful sentence. If in, in general conversation you guys when talk to each other and if one person do not agree with the other person what you say? You say that there is no logic in your words so I don't listen to you. So generally in our mind we have a concept that if there is no meaning of a word then actually it is not a logical word. So in this chapter, the, the heading of the chapter is the logic of the compound statements. We are going to talk about logics and the truth tables. So first thing is, since we are talking about the statements, so then we can define the logic. So the, the statement and the logic is actually coming from the combination of statements. So what is a statement? It is an expression that either must be true or false. So any expression which can be true or false is actually a statement. If you are talking about the truth or falsity of a statement, then it is called an argument. When you are, two persons are discussing something with each other, so you are making an argument. Why that argument? Because any one of you is actually want to prove his stance. Any one of you is actually want, is willing that he want to prove his 
theory to the other person so you are making an argument to prove your statement that it is true or false or there could be a third situation that you want to make it conditional you want to say that if one thing is true then the other thing will be true or if the one thing is true the other thing will be false so what happened what's happening we are actually building a block on the basis of chapter 1 and in chapter 1 we already studied that there are some conditional statements there are some universal statements there are some existential statements so I'm trying to build a building on the basis of those blocks which we have studied in chapter 1 so actually all these things when they will be combined in a mathematical way they will give us a logic in short a logic is defined as a science of reasoning if two persons are trying to prove their statement trying to prove themselves then actually they are giving some kind of reasons some kind of logical reasoning to their expression to prove it so let me make an argument I'm saying x is a real number if x belongs to to the set of either x is less than negative 2 x is greater than 2 then x square will always be greater than 4 oh, what is happening are you familiar with these things Are you familiar with this kind of statement? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, so I'm asking a question. Are you familiar with this kind of situation? What kind of statement is this? No, sir. What kind of this? Conditional. Conditional statement because? Conditional. Because, because of these two guys. These are these two are the culprits if and then the question is the argument is I want to say that if X is either if this is the real line this is the negative infinity this is the positive infinity here it is minus 2 here it is positive 2 I am claiming that if the value of X is on the left from this region from this point or the value of x is on the right from this point this is x this is x but this region i am ex i have excluded then whatever the value of x is within from this region or from this region then when I will take a square of the x, it will always be greater than 4. I can see, I can prove it from the real line that, okay, this region actually contains values from negative 0 0.999 so on to positive 0 0.999 so on now these two are the last peak values of this region which I have excluded from my argument so if I pick up any peak value which is the final value of the region 0 0.9 and I take a square of this value my answer will always be less than 4 this will not give me, oh sorry, 1.9, not 0. Point. This is negative 1. It will be 1.9. Now if you take the square of 1.9, it will never give you a value equal to 4 or greater than 4. It will be less than 4. So therefore, my argument contains some kind of logic. I can say, if this is written like this, then I can revert this situation and I can say that if if my x is 
not less than minus 2 or it is not greater than 2 then x square will not be greater than 4. Now these two statements both have the same meaning on the real line. So whether your argument is in this way or it is in this way but it should contain some kind of logic in it. If it contains a logic then your argument becomes meaningful. If it is not logical then you will fail to prove your stance.